Hi, I'm Steve Weirman, and today I'm going to talk about setting up the development environment using NetBeans and Java. This is the second video in the series on getting started with uh, Java programming. Uh, for more information, visit my website, www.iteran.com. So the first thing we're going to ha have to do is download the Java JDK, or the Java development environment. Uh, if you have Java applications or programs or uh, use Java applets, uh, if you see Java applets on the web, uh, we still probably have to download this JDK because what you probably have installed on your machine, if you've never done Java programming before, is the JRE or the Java Runtime Environment, which is enough to run Java programs, but it's not enough to actually get our, uh, actually develop Java programs. So where you need to go to get this JDK is Java dot oracle.com. If you go to that website, that redirects you to this page here. And under downloads, uh, under popular downloads, you'll see Java for developers. That's what we want. Uh, so under here, you'll see JDK and JRE. We want the JDK for Java SE 7 update 4. Uh, this is the latest release of Java and we want to accept the license agreement, otherwise we can't download it. And then just select the uh, JDK that matches your operating system and your hardware architecture. Now, some developers uh, say that the 64-bit Java isn't as performant as the 32-bit Java. Uh, so if you have a 64-bit machine, uh, you may still want to use the 32-bit uh, Java. It, uh, for the examples we're going to be doing, it doesn't matter. Uh, I would recommend just downloading whatever JDK matches uh, whatever type of operating system you're running. So since I'm running 64-bit Linux, I would download the 64-bit uh, Linux uh, tarwell there. Uh, I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward install. Uh, if you're running Linux, chances are you can also install the JDK uh, through your uh, software center or whatever uh, software store your distribution provides. Uh, the Ubuntu Software Center gives you the option of downloading the open JDKs. They don't provide the, uh, the actual uh, releases from Oracle. But the open JDKs are, uh, they have the same features as the Oracle release. Uh, they're just open source, they're released under the GNU General Public License, and, um, but they're not necessarily as performant. So it doesn't matter which one you use uh, for the tutorials that we'll be doing uh, in this lecture series. So once you have it downloaded and installed, you're going to need to get the NetBeans uh, IDE. And you can get that from netbeans.org. And we're going to be using the NetBeans 7.2 beta. Uh, you can also probably get away with using NetBeans 7.1 uh, if the notion of using a beta scares you. All beta means is that this is not the official stable release. It's a pre-release that needs to be tested. Uh, I prefer to use the beta because uh, since I'm not doing anything in a production environment right now, uh, by using the beta, I'm actually testing the IDE, and then if there's problems, uh, these can be reported to the NetBeans uh, community, and they can uh, resolve the uh, bugs and then have an even better NetBeans 7.2 once it's finally ready to be released. So you can download that here. Just click on download the NetBeans IDE. You've got a lot of options here. Uh, for what we're doing, all we need is the Java SE version, which is the smallest release here. Um, so you don't need any of the other ones. Uh, if you like to play around with other languages, you can download the full version right here. 
uh, but for our purposes uh, all we need is this version. Uh, again, it's a very straightforward install. If you've already installed Java, installing this will be a piece of cake. Uh, so download and install that. And once that's done, you can start up NetBeans. I've already started up NetBeans, here it is. Uh, and what you see here when you start it up is this start page, which has options to learn and discover. Uh, there's a lot of tutorials. You can try the sample projects that come with the, uh, that come with the IDE. Uh, there's my NetBeans, which after you've used NetBeans once, this is the page you're going to see. Uh, it'll show you all your recent projects. And it'll let you install new plugins or activate other features. So we're going to start a new project. This is just going to be a Java application. And in the traditional fashion of learning new programming languages, this is going to be a Hello World. Uh, example. So under project name just type in hello world and you'll see that that creates a main class hello world dot hello world. Uh, our standard convention here is uh, this pack this is a package this hello world is a package here that's just a folder that the class lives in. So our class hello world which is that. Uh, that's going to be hello world.java. That's our source file. Is going to sit in the folder hello world. Now it's common convention to make the package name the uh, reverse of whatever website your organization is. If you're writing a program for a uh, school or for a uh, for a company, you take your company's website and then you flip the uh, the domain name. So since I'm this is a tutorial that I'm putting up on itran.com, this is going to be com dot itran and then dot oops, put it in the package hello. So com dot itran dot hello is going to be our package name and then hello world is going to be our class name. If you're not sure what a class is, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, it's just our program. Uh, if you need more clarification on classes and objects, go check out the first lecture in the series. So I'm going to click finish and that will create my new project, hello world. Now let me get rid of these first four lines, that's just the default comments. And you'll see the first thing there is the uh, package declaration line uh, that says that this file should be in that folder. And if I go there, and if I go there, you'll see that it is in fact there. Now what this is, is actually a nested set of folders. So if I actually look at the uh, directory structure of this, you'll see under source, the SRC, you'll see a com directory, and under the com directory you'll see iteran, and under iteran you'll see hello, and under hello you'll see the hello world.java file. So that's what this actually looks like on the uh, file system. Uh, we don't have to worry about that right now, we're just writing a simple hello world program. So our class uh, is called hello world, our first actual line of real code is this class header, public indicating that it's viewable to other classes, class indicating that it's a class, and then the class name hello world. And then we've got the open curly brace, everything inside those two braces there is going to be part of our class. Don't worry about these comments just yet. I'll talk about them later. Uh, we've got this here, which is a method header. Method header uh, it defines the signature of our method. What is its scope? It's public. Um, I'll talk more about scope and static and return types later. But 
for writing a Java program, all we need to know right now is that we're going to have a method with the header public static void main, and then the arguments are going to be string args. This is an array of strings. Um, and we'll come back to that later, like I said. So all I want to do is print out a simple hello world me message. So here's what that's going to look like. System, system has to be capitalized, dot, out. This is getting the standard output stream. So this is going to send a message to our console, dot, print ln. Now that's, this is the print statement. That ln at the end of it means that it's going to add a carriage return to the end of our message. So we don't, and you can even read the comment right here that explains what this does. Hello world. And that's all there is to it. If I hit run, you will have the output displayed at the bottom here. So we just wrote our first Java program. Stop by next week and we'll do a little bit more. Not next week, next tutorial.